Hello and welcome back. So this is a video that I'm really excited for. Um, I've wanted to make for <laughs> quite a while now and um, hopefully I can find all of the words just to translate how important um, just chakra healing is and what it can do for your life, how it can change your life. Now in this context, we're gonna be talking about the masculine and the feminine. Um, now when we're talking about the masculine and feminine, especially when we're talking about chakra healing, we're not talking about gender. So um, it, it doesn't, you know, male and female doesn't have anything to do with masculine and fem feminine in this particular um, conversation. Um, though I will give examples of how this can show up in your life and um, in your relationships and uh, you know in your family so when we're talking about feminine usually feminine is uh, I would say receiving feminine is more of like the energy of it I feel like it's more of like a attracting so it's uh, things coming to you it's like being a magnet this could be for love this could be for opportunities when we talk about what type of things we could do, I guess, in our life, like running would be a masculine um, type of energy, whereas maybe floating would be more feminine, um, right? So not like rigorous doing laps, <laughs> that would be a uh, masculine action. But um, yeah, feminine is more of relaxation. It could be playing a musical instrument, um, listening to music, maybe not even playing the instrument, um, yoga that is you know more of the yin energy now for masculine it, it's usually anything where you have to use like the right hand side of your brain so uh, logical i guess thinking if you're doing math um if you have the type of job where you can't multitask like maybe you can't text and do your job like you have to stay focused right there are some jobs where you can completely zone out i've had jobs where i could be you know listening to music or completely you know doing my entire grocery list in my head and i didn't really have to pay attention that much because it's more of like busy body work um so obviously that would be more of an example of more of the feminine energy um but you know there are some things that um you kind of have to actually put your mind to or you have to exert energy um usually any activity that like raises your uh makes you kind of get warm get hot raises your blood pressure uh, gets you sweating so keep that in mind for this conversation because that is going to be important i've been looking into healing a masculine wound a wound that i did not know i had until jupiter started transiting my eighth house earlier this year. It started around um, the end of January and it's just finishing up. So by the time we get into May, it will enter my ninth. And um, I would say I'm happy for that, but the revelations that I've had, Jupiter as a planet, whatever it touches, it expands. So during heavy Jupiter transits, you might find yourself eating more. Um, <laughs> you know, you can find yourself, you know, making more money, but also you might find yourself spending more money. And so, you know, it can expand things for, you know, the better and for worse. And so if you have any type of wounds, especially in the eighth house, which is um, more of trauma, of death, of rebirth, of sex, um, of healing, of regeneration, of loss, you know, when it moves into that house, you know, it expands all of those topics. And so I became aware that I have a masculine wound. And it's a wound where because of, you know, early on in childhood, I had a very abusive step parent. This step parent was a male and um, it made me very afraid of men, but I did not know that I was afraid of men. And so I'm going to share with you what, and you can do some more research on this. There are tons of teachers and information that can help you work through this. But uh, I noticed that with men, I would almost, it's kind of like a, the, the daddy issues little, uh, which I mean, I think it's played out, but basically that's what we're explaining. It, it's where um, some women will try to compete with men, but also they want to almost either dominate and come out better than they are, you know, or they want um, just to be accepted, right? But not just by any man, like you, you'll find yourself doing this around many different men. Um, 
and so it's a it's kind of a, an intimidation thing and so ways in which some women might compete with men would be uh when we say things like um we start you know bragging about you know our job and whatnot and then we'll say you know i don't need a man and then you know we'll follow that up by you know what do you bring to the table you know like you know i'm doing this this and this i pay all my bills and if you think about it saying that in itself there's nothing wrong with that you know that is a person who has their stuff together but it's in the way you're saying it and even i think making note of it it's almost in a defensive type energy and so this would be an example of being in competition and usually it is with another man it is you know it's a competition of you know what do you bring to the table you know i am the table so what you know so what else what can you offer me um another example and which i found myself doing that too you know tr kind of um just hiding behind my job and how much i make and but in a prideful way not in a way that is um, you know relaxed and just generous because obviously if you make a certain amount of money you're able to share that with your friends your family and your loved one but almost as using it as a shield of oh you better have your stuff together because I bring this this and this to the table when in all actuality um, if we are equals it really doesn't matter if that man makes a little bit less than you it does not matter if maybe he's in between jobs you know it, it really depends on the person's character and um, what are their hopes for the future and what are they actively doing to pursue those hopes? You know, there are a lot of people who may move back home, both men and women, and they might not be working, but they might be going to school full time, you know, and when they might be taking classes to be like, let's say, an anesthesiologist, an anesthesiologist, after years of school, you know, they're making over six figures, you know, they're making six figures a year. And so... You know, for some people, if you were to meet a man where, oh, well, I don't go to work, but I'm going to school, you know, that some women would feel like, oh, he's a bum. You know, they wouldn't really stick around to see, you know, what else is he doing? It would just be like, oh, you don't have a job, but like, you know, this person could actually be working on themselves or they could be um, going through like a transition in their life. Maybe they just moved from another state um and you know they're trying to figure out what direction they want to take their career maybe they just got in out of a really bad relationship so um you know sometimes women i'm talking specifically about me but i've also seen this in some of my friends um you know where we have this wound a masculine wound um where we feel like we have to be better than the man or we have to compete for his affection and him say oh my gosh you have it all together or we have to earn his um not earn because we're not really earning it but we just kind of want him to concede and say wow you are a catch like you know in a kind of twisted way because you know there are people who would just be suck-ups but then there are people who would kind of be a little standoffish like they are better than you and they're just waiting for you to agree with what they believe in themselves that i have my crap together <laughs> you better make this much money if you want to have a chance at me um and you know this is um this is a key sign of you know daddy issues i know that I, that isn't really the most polite uh term for it but you know that is a masculine wound another way i've noticed that this shows up is withholding sex or using sex as um you know a, a reward system of uh I, i've seen i have friends who well if you're broke then you don't deserve you know sex well they don't really say that they say you know you don't deserve the p-u-s-s-y i'm gonna for the sake of you two i'm gonna keep it clean but you know if you're broke you don't deserve p-u-s-s-y and it's like who are they saying this towards like and why is that really coming out of their mouth like you know it, it just to even say that like there's like a lot of animosity and i feel like it projects that you've had bad situations with men probably poor relationships where you felt gypped like you didn't like they wronged you in some way and so now you're just kind of projecting that on everyone and um you know you're trying to hold sex like above someone's head where you know when it comes to sex i mean i have plenty of friends who maybe don't have a job and yet they don't feel like well they don't deserve sex you know just because they don't have a job or maybe their job is uh maybe they're flipping burgers or something 
does that mean they don't deserve sex? So sometimes we will use this in a combative way. And it is, uh, when you really think about it, this directly reflects on your belief system um, and how you were treated in the past. And so we're taking this baggage from our past negative experiences with men and we're kind of labeling them all and we're trying to not only compete to make us more or equal, but we're also, you know, trying to kind of just almost get acceptance from them. Like, wow, you are a bad B-I-T-C-H. Like, you're making more than him. Like, you know, we, we want that thumbs up. And it's like, why are we seeking that validation in that way? You know, when you are truly confident in yourself, when you're truly comfortable, and when you have worked through your blockages, you don't feel the need to compete with anyone. And you definitely don't do it in, you know, those ways. Um, so, you know, withholding sex, um, also people who have a fear of sex. So maybe I feel like I cannot enjoy being vulnerable with him or being nervous to have sex because you're you're afraid that it's too soon. Maybe you guys have known each other for, been dating for a couple weeks or whatnot, but you have this anxiety around being sex because you feel like he's going to abandon you once you give it up. So you're almost withholding it to basically bring more value to yourself, make this person really want it. So this is a, this is a manipulation tool. Um, while also, you know, protecting yourself because you have low self-esteem and you feel like if you have sex and then something goes wrong in the relationship, that it is a direct reflection on you and that in some way this is attached to your self-worth. So yes, this is another example of having a masculine wound and some of these masculine wounds stem from our childhood, but I do have friends who have had great childhoods and then they've just had bad partners and um, it has completely changed the way they see men. It has made them fearful. Some of them have been in abusive relationships. Some of them have had very tyrannical type boyfriends who basically kept them from going out, kept them from wearing certain clothes. And um, it was just a very negative situation. And um, it still colors the way that they see men years after their relationship has already ended. And so, I'm going to be sharing things that you can do if any of this sounds familiar to you or if you feel like you do have this um this wound um you know, we're going to be talking about ways that you can heal it ways that i'm healing mine and uh you know what psychologists say about this because this is this is a phenomena that affects a lot of people and we'll talk about the way the masculine wound is not only in relation to women but there are some men with masculine wounds and how they can also heal that and how the chakras and balancing all ties into this. Um, another example that I forgot to mention with sex is um, obviously the self-worth. So the fear of having sex too early or maybe even the fear of the first time you have sex, half of you really wants it. So you're in the moment, you're enjoying the moment, you're in your body and then somehow you get into your mind. You might have a little bit of anxiety afterwards you know, uh, negative thoughts, and this person didn't have to say anything. They didn't really have to do anything, but you're already worried about it. You know, this usually with people who have abandonment issues, maybe you had a husband who left um, you and your children or your child, or maybe you had a father who you just couldn't do anything right, or maybe he left your mom and you just didn't get to see him anymore. Maybe you've never met your father. A lot of these abandonment issues start off really early on, but you don't have to have a negative childhood to get these wounds you know there are plenty of people who've had positive childhood who you know later on manifest these wounds from their adult relationships particularly um, with the opposite sex so you know in a woman um, some of the examples that I've made you'll, you'll notice this in yourself if you have these masculine wounds also you'll notice yourself maybe competing in sports like feeling you have to know more about football. You don't really have an interest in football, but you feel like you need to learn some of the names of these players or maybe jump on some bandwagon so you can, you know, impress whomever, maybe your guy friends. Also, I've noticed with women with masculine wounds, and I'm also talking about myself, um, that uh, they will have far more guy friends than they do female friends. When you have a masculine wound, it completely kills the way you're able to relate to women. And you know, your ability to relate and get along is directly affected. And um, my biggest excuse was, well, women are too gossipy. I don't like the way they gossip or they're two-faced. 
and really that was just a direct reflection on the type of women that I was attracting into my life based on some of my wounds. So if you are not all clear, if you're not balanced, then the type of people that you hang around is are going to be a direct reflection of you. <laughs> or, you know, um, women who, let's say their friend has a crush on someone and as soon as that guy comes around, all of a sudden the girl starts kind of competing with her friend. She'll maybe say something that the friend did that was really embarrassing. Like, um, do you still have that yeast infection? Or, you know, they'll just like start putting the girl down, trying to embarrass her around her, um, around her crush when really, first off, that's kind of messed up. But, you know, girls do kind of get catty. Girls can um, try to compete even with each other, especially around the opposite sex, even if they are not interested in that guy. It's just, again, they want the validation from him. I'm on your side. I am not like the other girls. I'm better. I'm smarter. I'm into cool things. I'm into football. <laughs> you know, I know this or I ran track in high school. You know, I'm a tomboy. I'm not like these other girls. So this is, I guess, one of the perfect examples of a masculine wound. So these masculine wounds, they can start at a very, very young age. And some of these wounds you know, they happen to people, and, and now I'm going to talk about both men and women, they can happen to children even when their parent does not leave the home. So they could have a father in the household who is just emotionally unavailable. You could bring home A's, and that parent is just like, okay, good job. Or maybe you just, they never really acknowledge it at all. Or it's like, well, that's what you're supposed to do. You know, th this parent isn't very attentive. They're not the type of parent that you could go to with an issue. And if you do have an issue or if you do make a mistake, it's usually your fault. Um, you know, this parent's mind is always somewhere else. And so sometimes for some people, they could have their father in the household and still be a complete stranger. And sometimes this emotionally unavailable parent, this parent who the lights are on but no one's home, you just can't get through to them. Sometimes that is more destructive than if that parent were to not even be there at all. So sometimes the lack of that father figure is better and does less damage on the psyche than having that parent be there, having them be able to give love but then just not giving it, them holding back or them withdrawing that love from you. Maybe you did something and they just never got over it. Maybe you got pregnant at a young age and your relationship was never the same with that parent. Maybe you dated the wrong ethnicity, according to that parent. You know, we have some parents that are, uh, you know, quite racist. I know I did. I had a stepfather that was very racist. And so, you know, these things will make them withdraw. This wound, this masculine wound, we talked a bit about how it manifests in the woman. Let's talk a little bit about how it manifests in men. So men with a masculine wound, they have to seek validation from other men as well. So he's the type to, gosh, the, I'm thinking of like a man with a short stature, but a very large truck. <laughs> like a, he has to overcompensate. He has to come off as more manly than he really is. He has to talk about loving them and leaving them, pumping and dumping, you know, maybe he has a girlfriend and he's just, um, he's kind of controlling, okay? Maybe he wants to control the type of clothing she wears, and the more she tries to protest, just the harder he holds on, like the more he grips and he, you know, he fights against her instead of trying to reason or trying to meet in the middle. There is no meeting in the middle. This man has to have complete control down to everything. He might even make comments or remarks to put her down about her weight. So the stuff, type of things that he eat, that she eats, like this control goes very deep. Um, it, of course, like uh, with these types of people, um, they will try to keep their, you know, loved one from like their family. They'll try to have them all to themselves because they are easier to control. You don't have to worry about who they're going out with, who is there. Um, you don't have to worry about that family member putting a seed of doubt in their minds and then that, you know, that girlfriend or that wife turning on them and leaving them. Because all you need is the support of one other person to get you out of this negative relationship. And they know that. And so that's why a lot of times they will, um, you know, try to get them away from their family and friends. 
get them alone, secluded, you know, oh no, I don't, I don't want to go to Thanksgiving. I can't stand how your grandma goes on and on about, you know, whatever, or they'll have an issue with your aunt or a cousin or, and you'll notice that you'll start to just go along with what they want to do. Well, I don't want you home alone for Thanksgiving. So we'll just do something here. And, um, it's very interesting how that works. Um, so they will overcompensate. They will use excessive force sometimes. Men never have a talk. It's never an option for them to be a stay at home dad. You know, they always have to have a successful job. You know, they always have to be the breadwinner, the provider, you know, they can't stay home. What? You're going to be a stay at home father or, you know, stay at home husband and your wife is going to go out and provide for the family. Like that's not even an option for them and it never is they already have uh, like oh my favorite example if someone breaks into your home at night you and your you know husband or your boyfriend are sleeping who do you think is going to go downstairs to check who do you think you know if you do have something to defend yourself who do you think is going to grab it and go check things out it's always the male it, it's never oh honey let me go get it you stay here like no that never happens <laughs> We just kind of assume, you know, he is here to protect. He's here to make the money to provide and to protect. And so we try to say, oh, we're equals now. And, you know, oh, I make more money than a man or blah, blah, blah. But like, we really don't truly believe that. We, we really don't. So from a very young age, they are bred in a sort of way, you know, of, uh, of just authority and of power. And, um, you know, men are much, much stronger than women. And so when you know it comes to who could inflict more harm even you know a punch from a man is going to pack 10 times more force than that of a woman and so you know there are some men who will take their physical strength not only that but maybe even their financial strength and they will be you know tyrannical with it you know they will abuse their power and so usually these men who are abusing the power or um just in any type of power struggle with the opposite sex, a sex that is physically weaker, not in a mental state, but you know, just anyone who they deem as weaker, you know, they will just basically put their finger in the wound. They'll know exactly where to hit you, to have you second guessing yourself, to keep you in a lower vibration. They'll abuse their power. These are men with a masculine wound. They could have had a father in the home or not had a father at all. And they feel like you know they can do these things like they definitely were not raised in a very loving home you know I'll, I'll put it that way anyone who hurts other people or take advantage of other people you know they usually have some issues some traumas from early on um but in, in this case he not only has to prove himself to you but he also has to prove himself to his fellow man and so he has to come off as macho as aggressive Lord, heaven forbid you make more money than him you better never let anyone find that out <laughs> if you have a nicer vehicle than he does you know that type of um thing or hearing that from his friends that oh wow she's doing really well for herself what are you doing like that's something that could absolutely kill his low self-esteem so you know the, these masculine wounds it's so funny it's like uh, you'll have fathers who grew up as child with uh, an, an absent father or a father who was not emotionally available and they will grow up to then have this masculine wound and their girlfriend or their wife will have to endure you know their, their tyranny and then if they have a family it's like the cycle starts again their way their you know i hate to say this word that toxic masculinity where just i hate to say it just because it's it's overused this just cycle just goes over and over and so you know you have a woman who is already wounded usually because usually if we're already wounded we kind of attract these types of characters and so sometimes we can become a victim or like i said before we will get overly defensive and we'll feel like we have to prove ourselves so we will have to put down the man in order to lift ourselves up so when you're seeing these posts about if you're broke you can't get the p-o-s-s-y or if you're seeing people say um i am the table what are you, you know, like, uh, usually in a relationship, it, it's equal. It's, you know, you're meeting in the middle. Um, but these types of people don't see it like that. And it's because they're wounded. Another example of the masculine wound is a woman who has to be the provider. So maybe growing up, her mother always worked, her father was not there. And so as soon as she was able to work, maybe 15 or 16, 
what she is making is helping to take care of the rest of the family. Or maybe this woman was married and all of a sudden the husband leaves and so now she's the sole provider. And so she's working overtime, living paycheck to paycheck to paycheck. And she's in this, um, this survival state of not having enough. There's never anything in savings. And she's having to be the provider and she's having to bring, try to bring financial security. Sometimes this, um, this kind of masculine wound is, is interesting because it's more related to our root chakra. So of the stability of the security, it's directly related to our survival instinct. So I don't wanna say fight or flight, but this is more of just the basic needs. So the roof over our hat, head, you know, something in our belly. He doesn't have to be the highest quality food, but you're just in that basic survival instinct. And so you never get to the place where you could eat organic foods, eat the most nutritious meals or those supplements that are going to nourish your body. And you're stuck in this, this, this weak root chakra um, type of energy. And so you're having to take on the masculine role instead of um, being more in your, your, your feminine role of being joyous, of being happy, of being lighthearted, of being nurturing. Because usually when these um, single moms have to provide for the rest of the family, they have to take on the masculine role of security. Um, usually, even though they love their children, they're not home enough to do the whole nurturing thing. Um, or sometimes they get really stressed out. And so you have this constant negative energy and um, they might become a little a little strict with the kids, you know, maybe not always saying the kindest things, maybe them going from talking to yelling, like it happens really quick. Like they're just always in a bad mood. And um, this depletes a woman, this you, literally, it just, it takes years of life from her. It is, it's a very negative state to be in and people sadly get stuck in this state for a very long time. So, a woman is her most powerful in the um, when she's in her more sacral chakra type energy you know that is you know in her femininity and um, usually she's at a very high vibration and so the vibration is also high when she is working as a team as a partner with her spouse so they have they have enough to where they can both save and they can both provide for their family and so they have enough money for you know going and getting you know, groceries from Whole Foods or making sure that the vegetables are organic or, you know, they have extra. And so when you're doing it alone, sometimes you're just, you're barely scraping by, but you're doing everything you can. So this is a very low vibrational state. And so sometimes this woman, this masculine wound will start to open. Even if it wasn't there before, it'll, it'll start to crack and it'll start to bleed. And, um, you know, she might find herself, you know, doing things to be with men that seem to have more money or seem to be of high stature that she normally wouldn't do. But just because they can provide financial um, security, she will allow this man to come into her home. She will allow this man to be a stepfather even though he doesn't really get along with her children and she will allow this to happen. She will lower her expectations because he has met you know, her financial needs or he is helping in some way. And so you can see how this starts a pattern of then traumatizing the children that the cycle of the masculine wound starts again. So in the next video, because this is getting kind of long, we will talk about um, the balancing of the chakras um, and how this relates to how you attract men, what type of men you're attracting and um, how not only are you giving love, how you're showing up in the relationship, but also how are you actually receiving love um, and uh, maybe why you're missing out on those opportunities of balance, of harmony, and of a happy relationship.